Hi! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Bianca and today I am 365 days sober. Today is a very special day for me. It marks the one year point since my last relapse. <laughs> okay, so I had to get rid of the balloons because they were driving me insane. Because I turned one, I wanted to look nice, so I let my hair down, but that was driving me insane too. So she made an appearance and back to her messy bun, she goes. A messy bun for a messy life. Okay, focus Bianca. So my relapse began uh, Cinco de Mayo of last year and then ended on May 9th. So May 10th of 2020 was my first day sober and it has been a whole year since then. If you are new here, my name is Bianca and I'm a recovering alcoholic. I have been trying to get sober for about five or six years. I say that because I officially started my recovery journey in the fall of 2016 when I went into treatment. There was an event in 2015 that happened that kind of like got the ball rolling on all of this stuff. So it's like five years, six years, you know. Um, May 10th, 2021 is my first birthday. It is also the six year anniversary of me giving my mom the best Mother's Day gift ever. Picking up her beautiful angel daughter from jail, Mother's Day morning. Happy Mother's Day! <laughs> uh, it's crazy that, like, I didn't even, I, of course I didn't plan this, but it's just crazy how six years ago was, like, the worst day of my life. Um, and then now I'm celebrating one year of sobriety on that same date. Before I start the story, I should explain what a blackout is for those who don't know what a Because blacking out was second nature for me, I kind of forget that there are people out there who have never blacked out before. Crazy, I know. I'm not a scientist, but when you have a blackout, it's because there's so much alcohol in your system that your hippocampus starts to shut down. The hippocampus is the part of the brain that is responsible for memory consolidation. So it takes it from short-term to long-term storage. When you have a blackout and wake up the next morning and have no idea what you did the night before, it's because all of the memories that you created that night never made it to long-term memories because your hippocampus was shut down and couldn't do its job. I blacked out almost every time I drank. It was like very rare that I didn't black out. And that's why my friends called me Bob, which is short for blacked out Bianca. And that's why that's the name of this channel. Looking back, I probably should have been like, hmm, if I'm blacking out so often that my friends are giving me a nickname, maybe I have a problem. But I didn't care, so obviously I wasn't going to think of it. The reason my mom had to pick me up from jail on a day that's supposed to be all about her is because the night before I was arrested for a DWI, driving while intoxicated. The night of my DWI, I wasn't in a complete blackout. Um, I kept kind of going in and out of it. Some people refer to this as a brownout. You still remember things here and there, but it's not a complete blackout where everything is just completely gone. I don't like calling it a brownout because I think of diarrhea and not my brain or memory. So I always refer to brownouts. Ew. <laughs> I refer to brownouts as blacking back in. So if I was telling a story, I would say I was blackout drunk, but then I blacked back in and did yada 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 and then blacked out. And that's exactly how this night was. To give a little backstory, it was 2015 and I was 23 years old. I was living in a house that was near campus but had dropped out of college and I had two roommates that I lived with. I was also in the process of creating a big girl job for myself. A lot of my friends had graduated from college 
and kind of transitioned from their college job to their big girl job. And now that I wasn't in school and needed to work full time, I really liked my college job. So I figured I could just like create a big girl job for me. So I was in the process of trying to start an online, um, an online store for the boutique that I work at. And let me tell you, I thought I was a working woman. Now I was gonna be a huge success at the tender young age of 23 because I'm just that intelligent and that amazing. Um, I was an idiot. I was naive and still kind of like optimistic about life. Maybe not like optimistic, but I guess I still believed that like, you know, follow your dreams. You can accomplish anything if you put your mind to it. So basically I thought I knew everything. And in reality, I literally knew nothing. On top of it, I had a drinking problem. So yeah, finding success at 23 was just like not in the cards for me. It just was not gonna happen. That year, Cinco de Mayo was on a Tuesday and I continued drinking tequila on Seis de Mayo, Siete, Ocho, Nueve de Mayo. And I just remember like really vividly one morning, I was hugging the toilet, puking my brains out and I just felt so hopeless. I was crying and I kept thinking like, why can't I stop? I want to stop and I need to stop, but I just, I just can't stop. Um, back then I thought it was a self-discipline issue and I was just really weak. I thought that I just had like terrible impulse control and I had no idea that alcoholism was an actual disease and no matter what I did, I was never going to be able to control my drinking. So I had been out drinking the night of May 9th and I have no recollection of this, but I got in my car and tried driving home. The last thing like I remember is it goes from me taking a shot to then me standing on the side of the road outside of my car on the passenger side and I thought I had a flat tire. Yes, I called my roommate and asked her to come help me, but I was so wasted that I just like, I couldn't explain where I was. I couldn't like communicate what was happening. So I gave her a heart attack that night because she knows I'm drunk and she has dealt with Bob in the past and she knows I need help, but now I'm not answering my phone and she has no idea where I am. I think she just ended up calling my parents because she just, she didn't know what to do at that point. I do remember seeing the like red and blue flashing lights of a cop car and then it goes black. And the next thing I know, I'm sitting in like the back of a transport truck and it's completely dark but I can tell that there's someone to the left of me and then there's someone to the right and then there's people across from me and none of us are speaking, but we all have our hands behind our backs like this. So I realize for a second that I've been arrested and I, tr I start crying and then I like, I start trying to pull my wrists out of the handcuffs and I was trying so hard that I cut my wrist and then I like, I had really bad red marks around my wrist for quite a while after that. Um, then I blacked back out. And then the next thing I remember is, I don't know like where I was exactly, but it, it was like a really bright room. I thought like everything was white and it kind of reminded me of like the locker room at a public swimming pool. I remember there being two girls sitting across from me and they were just laughing at me and um, I was probably just being a drunk idiot and making them laugh. I do not know if I had to do the good old squat and cough uh, to make sure I didn't have any drugs or like miniatures stuffed up my butt, but that is like something that I just like always wonder. For some reason, I just like want to know if that happened. Maybe that's why the girls were laughing. The next thing I remember is waking up in a cell and I'm just lying on this super 
uncomfortable concrete bench. It was part of the wall, so like the wall was concrete and then it like came out and made a ledge and then went down to the floor. There are no clocks anywhere, so I have no idea what time it is. I have no idea where I'm at and there's no windows, so I don't even know like if it's dark outside or if it's light outside. Uh, that day I had worn a blouse that was like two pieces. Um, it was only like a tube top and then like a like a really thin cardigan that went over it. They only let you keep like your top and your bottoms and they take everything else. So no shoes, no jacket, no sweatshirts, obviously like no purses, no cell phones, and no one there knew anything about fashion. So they took my little cardigan because they considered it to be a jacket, not a top. There I was sitting in my bright red skinny jeans, a black tube top and bright white bra straps and my hair's a mess i'm just a mess the good thing about that tube top was that it was extra stretchy so basically i could like pull it out to here and then like put my arms in and just kind of try to keep myself a little bit warmer um, there were five or six girls in the cell with me and i noticed that i had a yellow br wristband on my right wrist but I noticed that none of the other girls had it. It was only me. Later on, I learned that I was under medical observation and a staff member would have to come check on me. I don't know how often, if it's like every hour or half hour and just basically make sure that I'm still breathing and that I haven't had a seizure because my blood alcohol level was like that insane. I tried falling back asleep, but obviously it's cold and concrete is not very comfortable. Basically all I can do is just wait and sober up. And it felt like days had passed. Like thinking about that, it still just like creeps me out because I've just, I've never been confined like that before, ever. So now it is eight o'clock in the morning and we get to make our phone call. I called my dad first, which uh was weird because he was in Denver and couldn't do anything to help me at that time. I think I did call him first though because I was just so scared of what my mom's reaction was gonna be. I like, I guess I kind of wanted a little bit of info on like, how mad is mom? What do you guys know? What happened to me? Do you know what happened to me last night? Cause I don't. Um, anyways, I just end up calling my mom and she was not mad at all. If anything, I think she was just very relieved that I was alive. So yeah, she said she would come get me. The only problem was I didn't even know where I was and she obviously doesn't know where I am. So I had to ask a staff member like, hi, where am I? And she told me the Metropolitan Detention Center, so I tell that to my mom. Now, if you don't know me, I grew up pretty privileged and extremely sheltered. I went to a really strict private Christian school from kindergarten through 12th grade. I was a perfectionist and a complete like goody two shoes up until my senior year, but that's another video for another day. One time I got a lunch detention my freshman year of high school and I cried because I was so ashamed and I could not stop crying and I never got a lunch detention after that. I just didn't get in trouble. So of course, obviously I know nothing about like detention centers or jail or just like anything like that. That's like completely foreign to me. I had never even stepped foot near a jail. Like my closest interaction was watching Orange is the New Black, and that's a TV show and nothing like real life. So after I made my phone call, I noticed that there's like a TV and like a bunch of chairs and rows. And so I just like go and sit down and it wasn't normal TV. It was like a promo video, I think, for like the detention center that just like played on a loop. But obviously that was better than just sitting in my cell literally doing nothing. There I am. I'm like, oh, I can just sit back and relax and I could just watch this video until she comes and gets me. Basically, like I'm like a child being picked up from daycare. Then a guard comes over to me and is like, 
can you please like go back to your cell? And I jumped up right away and was just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It wasn't like I knew what I was doing was wrong and then I was just trying to see how long I could get away with it. I just legitimately didn't know or think like, oh yeah, they just let you out of your cell to make your phone call and then you go back. So, and maybe it was just in my drunk little brain, but I definitely felt like I was getting kind of treated differently. It kind of felt like everyone was just like, what the fuck is this little girl doing here? She needs to get out or she's gonna get eaten alive. And that is really fucked up. But at the time I was not complaining. I was like, yes, I don't belong here. I couldn't even survive public school. How am I gonna survive jail? There was a girl in my cell who had just graduated from UNM with a degree in chemistry the night before. Of course, she was out celebrating and she got a DWI. I obviously was gonna bond more with the girl who got a DWI and went to the same school as me more than the girl across from me with face tattoos and is arrested for armed robbery. Again, super fucked up. I know. Anyways, my friend told me that none of her like friends or family members were picking up. And so of course, naive drunk idiot Bianca is like, oh my God, my mom is like so nice. We can like totally give you a ride wherever you need to go. I didn't realize that like this is jail and it doesn't work that way like a family member has to come get custody of you it's not just like let's carpool from jail my mom drives me to her house because i mean i don't even have a car and we now have to figure out like what my next move is like do i get a lawyer where's my car my license got revoked how do i get a new one but we get home and i just go to the couch and pass out by that time, I had a hangover from hell and a shame over from Satan himself. And I had to sleep on concrete like the night before. So yeah, of course I just needed sleep. As I kept sobering up, it was like the more and more I would realize like actually what had happened. And of course I wanted to escape from that. And I had no booze, so sleeping was the next best thing. Um, one good thing was my little brother was in high school at the time and he was taking a cooking class. So he at least made my mom breakfast after I ruined Mother's Day. Because the last thing a mom wants to do is pick up her kid from jail, but it's better than a body bag. So the next few days were really rough. I finally found the impound lot that my car was at. So my mom drove me over there. They let me back into the lot. It was like a big gravel lot and there were just a ton of cars there. It was Cinco de Mayo, so busy week. I finally find my car and when I see it, I just drop to my knees and start bawling. And if you wanna hear the rest of the story, you're just gonna have to wait until next week. Was there a rogue passenger? How did the hole in the windshield get there? Why am I smiling in my mugshot? Find out on next week's episode of Bianca's Shitty Life Decisions. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please like, and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment if you're feeling extra generous and don't drink and drive, especially the night before Mother's Day, okay? I'm serious, don't do it. Okay, well, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!